Hello everyone, welcome back to the TJ Omega channel for day 921 of our daily video streak and we have to address something today. So tomorrow is going to be the next fan stream from Hasbro Pulse and after the last two, let's admit, okay yes, they have been disappointing because it's been a lot of stuff that leaks have already covered or it has been a bunch of merch stuff that Transformer fans don't tune in for. Okay, all right, right? So I think that's fair to acknowledge. What is not fair has been a lot of the vitriol I have seen online recently where the guys running the stream, the guys on camera are copying a lot of the blame and a lot of the heat for what we consider to be these subpar streams. And I will admit my own reactions to the last couple streams have been a little over the top. I have seen people in the comments section describing TJ's tangents. And you know what? You know what? That's fair. I can go on a tangent every now and then. I have seen people comparing it to Plastic Addict, where I was in that mindset. And that's not really what I want from this. The fan streams should be a time to just kind of celebrate what we're getting and like the few communications we get directly from the Hasbro stream. Uh, team that should be a fun experience and we should enjoy what we get to see in their accounts of it because what you don't get from leaks and listings is the accounts of the people who actually made the toys but that said they are copying so much of the blame largely because a lot of this has already gotten into people's hands you know Tomorrow, we're expecting Generations releases, you know, uh, uh, announcements of toys that are already released in other parts of the of other parts of the world. So, let's go over this a little bit. First off, let's just figure out who the people on stream actually are, and how much they could possibly hold the blame, and then we'll just start going into the real sources and then the whys of the whole thing, all right? So we're just going to go and cover all of our bases. For starters, uh, yeah, let's look at this guy. So Evan Brooks is, the associate is an associate designer for Hasbro. He is currently on the Generations brand, but he typically handles Studio Series 86, uh, also handles things with HasLab and has had his hands in Evolution as well as United recently. So he's, you know, he's getting more and more involved with the brand itself. But as said, he's just a designer. He's not the one in charge of any of the marketing. He's just one of the people who's willing to come on camera and talk about the toys he helped design. Right? So, yeah. And... Uh, Shout out to Evan because he's usually like the one of the most social ones. Like he's usually one of the most approachable on social media. So like they're like not faulting him at all here. Uh, we have Mark Marr. Uh, he is a lifelong Transformers fan. He is the lead designer for Generations. Uh, and he's had his hands in it since Siege. Um, and even before then... He was working on new decos for... He was working on deco for toys ever since Dark of the Moon. So we've had him for a long time now. And he's worked his way up all the way to the point of being the main designer of these, of this toy line. I can't... You know, long, you know, in, for a while, he was the guy solely responsible for all the hand-painted prototypes we saw. For all... It, it, I can't tell you how much of a blessing and a boon it is that someone who genuinely has a passion for the Transformer brand is running the Transformer brand. I don't think that can be understated in the least because there's a lot of people who would just see, you know, who just, a lot of companies just have these brands under the, under the hands of bean counters who are only going to focus on the major characters and just this guaranteed stuff. So the fact that it's someone who genuinely knows what he's talking about, knows the characters, and knows the brand, that's something big. And then we get to Ben McRae. Uh, so he's usually, he's BMAC on the streams. He's usually the guy that's doing most of the talking and most of the, uh, uh, like, the close-up camera stuff. He's the associate brand manager of global brand development and marketing on the Transformers brand at Hasbro. So... Yes, he does help in, you know, he does help in a lot of the marketing projects behind this. You know, he's, you know, one, you know, he kind of puts together the stuff for the Haslabs, etc. 
However, yes, he is part of marketing, but he's low tier on that. I don't, some of you kind of don't realize how deep it goes, how deep some of this stuff goes when it comes to what they can and can't do. Really, all Ben does, as far as marketing goes, are is campaign stuff. Like, um, you know, where where he's like, in, he has his hands on Holiday Optimus Prime, Transformers Collaborative stuff, and HasLabs. Um, he's not the one that's really in charge of the streams, despite appearing on them. Uh, last we checked, it was Isabella Weiss, who was actually in charge of what happens is in... Hasbro Pulse uh, streaming events. Uh, she used to appear on camera, and she holds the same corporate title, Associate Manager for Global Brand Development and Marketing of the Transformers brand. So, she's a, she's been in on all that, and she used to appear on stream, does not anymore, but as far, last we checked, she's the one in charge of what happens on the streams, and organizing them and all that. However, even then, <laughs> even then, I don't think she has a voice in what actually gets released. I'm sure she, I'm sure she would love to keep up with the leaks. But you have to go higher up the totem pole than that even. So like where do we go higher? Do you realize how deep corporate structure gets? Really? Uh there's Kelly Rose, Director of Global Brand Strategy and Management for Transformers. This is the higher up. This is about as high as you get without leaving the Transformers brand. But even then, you go even higher. Hasbro's current chief uh, chief marketing officer is Jason Bunge, who handles everything Hasbro marketing. So you never know. This is why, like, when you see me get upset on stream about why Hasbro marketing just is not doing justice to Transformers and isn't being as generous with the information as they could be, a lot of my blame is generalized. I blame Hasbro in general, not the people on stream, because they really don't have any control over this. The three guys they put out on a camera to talk about the stuff they worked on, that has nothing to do with what they're allowed to talk about and what you know what is actually said. If they can't keep up with the leaks, it's someone up the scale. And I don't know who up the scale has that word but it ain't the three that we're watching. So first off, leave them alone. First off, just leave them alone. They're doing their best. They're obviously fans. They obviously have a passion for what they're doing. Don't. Don't be the guy. Don't be the one personally attacking them like they had something to do with it just because they have to announce stuff that people already know about. Official stuff has to get announced. Period. This is their way of doing it. So... Is it behind? Yeah. Is it their fault? No. And I'm not showing you these other people in charge to give you new targets to attack. If you're attacking people because they're not showing off the toy you want, um, wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Don't do that. You know, I remember, like, I cast a wide, I cast, like, a wide net when it comes to blaming Hasbro marketing for just subpar releases and what they could be doing and do not. I don't target specific people. I don't target specific individuals because that's just a jerk thing to do. Criticize the company, fine. Attack the people specifically, not fine. Not fine. We are not going to do that. Let's examine the reasons. So why exactly would Hasbro be so slow to actually release this information? So the old idea is the old-fashioned corporate espionage. The idea that if they showed off their toy while it was still in production, there is a chance that a company out there could actually copy it and beat them to the punch, releasing a faster, lower-quality version that is still technically the toy they intended to release. It is the reason why BotCon custom class figures generally weren't allowed to leave that particular uh, room unless they were assembled and painted because Hasbro did not want you taking home a toy that was still on sprue exactly how they laid it out exactly how they made the figure and you know potentially let it be copied somehow what you see on here is actually a BotCon 2010 sideswipe the the custom class figure 
The only figure from BotCon 2010, my one BotCon ever, I don't have. The price on it is absolutely absurd. And the fun part is, if I had this, I wouldn't even assemble it. I'd probably just, like, take the I'd take the sprues out of the bag and frame it. Because when else are you ever going to see an unassembled Transformer like this? You're not. So, admittedly, it's kind of cool. But I understand why. Because this would let a company, you know, duplicate their molds exactly. As far as just beating to the, them to the punch on the market, well, uh, third parties pretty much got you there. Naval Commander here was out well before Armada Optimus Prime's new Legacy figure. Do I think the Legacy figure is better? Yes. Yes, I actually do. Um, especially, not even just on an affordability standpoint. I think it needs. I think it does everything it needs to do exceptionally well. So, yeah, um, that worry is uh, a little bit dated. So, uh, And also, Hasbro's kind of getting beyond this a little bit. So here we have the mold layouts for Victory Saber. Now, to be fair... This is a much bigger project, and this isn't exactly how the molds are, and they're not showing us all the molds. But this is a pretty, this is a pretty like strong example of them being willing to actually show off Transformers in the production cycle. And this is a major Transformer. Like, there's a lot of money that goes behind the backing of a HasLab project. So this is stuff that really shouldn't get out if they were really still concerned about that. So the fact that they are willing to show it off is kind of telling, you know, and I do think that's kind of an important step here. So really, if they really wanted to, Hasbro could be showing us brand new Transformers as soon as they reach this resin prototype state. As soon as they get to this point, they should have a secure enough, you know, you know, idea of what the toy is going to be in order to confidently say, this is the toy that's coming out next year. You know, we know about this toy a year and a half ahead of its release. We have internal shots and, you know, the shots of the mold layouts and everything a company would probably need to beat them to the punch. But it's not going to happen. It's really not going to happen. So it's it's interesting. And, and, it's, and this is really what we should be getting. In my opinion, this is what we should be getting because there really isn't a reason to not do this. There are other reasons, however. I say there's no other reason as far as, like, espionage goes, but there are reasons for why you don't make the announcements before the, the toys are actually in production. Uh, one of them is uh, just interpretation. So this isn't as common as it used to be. But when, when we got to find out what toys were coming out based on eBay leaks. Usually, like, the prototypes would show up on eBay or the Chinese equivalent, Taobao, and we would see what an upcoming toy looked like in prototype colors. And this drew in so many morons. You had so many people on message boards and comment sections talking about, they're really making it in that color? Oh, my, oh, why, why are they doing an Optimus Prime in, in like, mint green they're not you morons that's not how the toys coming out it's just people who don't understand the design process and what a prototype is just mouthing off and this kind of thing would end up spreading you know so you had a sect of people who genuinely believed you know, like if this bludgeon was like released like this if this bludgeon was leaked 15 years ago looking like this, if this is the first example we had of this bludgeon toy coming out, you'd have people wondering why bludgeon was coming out in blood red and, you know, like blood orange color. No. So just to avoid avoiding confusion is one aspect. Another aspect is that things change. Plans change all the time, you know, and sometimes Hasbro cannot control that or just certain circumstances force them to change. For instance, Legacy Evolution was supposed to include package refreshes of Cheetor and Wheeljack. There were listings for it. You know the listings that we're swearing by right now and going like, why aren't you showing this from the leak list? Why aren't you showing us the primes? Because we know the primes are coming out next year and all this kind of stuff. It's because of things like this. When a listing comes out, it's not final. You know? You know, you look at all the canceled toys from like, uh, like Dark of the Moon had like Soundwave and, and Wheeljack canceled. 
You know, so those never made it to U.S. retail, but the listings were there. The line just got cut short. Same thing happened to Animated. You know, all the listings for Goldfire, uh, you know, Grimlock and, you know, Fugitive Wasp that never saw the light of day. They were in listings, but they never came out because plans change, toy lines get canceled. So it means that they try very hard to actually only announce stuff when it's in production, when they know for certain it's coming out in the state that they are showing off, just so they can avoid confusion and to avoid disappointing people. Because that's happened many times over the years already. For instance, BotCon 2010, our, the previously mentioned convention, showed off their version, you know, showed off uh, Reveal the Shield reflect or, or uh, Perceptor for the first time, and they announced in their intention to do it later on as Reflector. Reflector never happened. So that's a lot of people, and a lot of years, people going like, where's my Reveal the Shield Reflector? Never happened in any way, shape, or form. Disappointment all around, and just leads to a lot of negativity in the in the in the uh, in the community itself, because it's just a lot of people just gonna like, why is Hasbro keeping our toys from us? Why isn't Hasbro making what we want? Why aren't they doing what they promised? It leads to a lot of vitriol. It leads to a lot of chaos and vitriol, and they try to avoid that as much as possible. So that's another understandable reason. They made the mistake recently with Polar Claw. Uh, so remembers that splash shot from Kingdom. Remember where it showed Gears as a character in the Kingdom line who we're only now getting in Legacy United. Uh, it, also showed, it also showed fossilizers that never happened in series because the line just got cut short for those. It's unfortunate, but by their design, they were going to go with these characters. Originally, that's what they had in mind. Plans change. Things get derailed. So it's unfortunate. Like it's it's very unfortunate that uh, things like this happen. But this feels more like Hasbro learning from past mistakes and not wanting to set up false expectations. You know, they want to make sure that whatever they announce is absolutely going to come out. So, okay, fair. I still think they could announce what they intend to do. I still think they could say like. These are the characters we are designing. These are the characters that are planned for release, you know, subject to change. You know, this is not a guaranteed thing. They could make it very clear that this is just intention and not guarantee. You know, so there's ways you could frame it to give us more. But there are also, yes, a few valid reasons why we wouldn't get the info as fast as we would like. So... We're preparing for tomorrow's stream. As usual, I will be doing my reactions to it, giving my thoughts and everything that's going down. Uh, I will try to focus more on what they are talking about with the toy and the stuff that you can't get from a leaked listing or an in-hand photo, you know, photo shoot that someone, you know, this because someone was lucky enough to get it early, you know, off in some other country. So, I'll try to be a little more positive. We'll try not to be as hostile, and I'd want you guys to do the same. Don't go attacking these three don't start attacking them on their socials don't start blaming them for you know because they're not showing you everything they want there's reasons there are absolutely reasons to it and i just want to address that before we get to the stream tomorrow so this is just a call to just calm down being fully aware i need to calm down too so um yeah i will see you guys tomorrow for the stream remember Remember, we do have the bingo card. If you want to play along and play some bingo with this, see if we've had a few bingos reported on Twitter. We've had a few bingos in the game. I'll leave the link to the card below so you can play along tomorrow. And as always, I will see you next time.